I started buying hoopties and I became a hoopty owner. 1994 Dodge Viper. 2023 Audi e-tron GT. 1990 Eagle Talon TSI. 1994 Mercury Cougar XR7. Cadillac DeVille Professional. $7,000 hanging on our wall right there. Becoming a YouTuber probably wasn't the best thing for me. Uh, I once owned a car dealership and then I became a YouTuber and everything changed. I started buying what Tyler Hoovey calls hoopties and I became a hoopty owner. As a matter of fact, I think I'm turning into, I don't actually know if the term hoopty is coined by him. Maybe that's his and I'm taking it from him, but I get it. What a hoopty is, is basically like a clunker. I have a bunch of clunkers, a bunch of junkers, all because I wanted to make YouTube videos as a YouTuber. My life as a used car dealer isn't something I always wanted to be. I didn't want to aspire to be a used car dealer. I actually went to school for broadcast journalism. I wanted to be on TV and make videos, which is essentially what I'm doing now. I just like cars and it was profitable and it supported a lifestyle I wanted to live. And I enjoy it for the most part. I enjoy buying cars that I enjoy. It makes me happy. I get an instant high and I get to make a video about it and share my content with you guys. and then interact in the comment section. It's really, really fun. I actually get to do what I love to do now versus just having to like sell cars all the time. But becoming a YouTuber has really ruined my car dealership. And in today's video, I'm gonna tell you all about it as well as show you all of my junkers, my clunkers and my hoopties and how my dealership has transitioned to something I'm not so proud of anymore. My name is Craig from Flying Wheels. Let's get going. Hoopty, 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 clunker. And then I have some more clunkers over there. I have an entire parking lot, not just one, three places that I'm starting to get too many YouTube cars. They're not making me any money. What? They make no sense. They're actually tying up a ton of money and they completely changed my car dealership from something that was decent, selling good cars all over the place to like embarrassing, embarrassing, embarrassing. Doesn't run, doesn't run. Embarrassing, embarrassing, uh, cool. All because I enjoy making YouTube videos. I enjoy working on projects, but long-term projects are taking away from my dealership and it's actually costing me money. So before I even dive into what's here, I'm gonna take you to my overflow lot. We're gonna start showing you all of my inventory that I can't sell, long-term projects that I had in my head, delusions of grandeur, illusions of grandeur that I had on some vehicles. How many thousands of dollars, tens and maybe hundreds of thousand dollars I have tied up into cars that I can't sell or make any money off of that are tying up money and not even running. I once had a dream. I had a dream that I was gonna sell supercars, like fun, really cool cars. I started a car dealership in Florida when I was 23, buying and selling cheap cars, like literally cheap cars. And I said to myself, and I still have it on paper, the day I wrote it, I do not wanna be selling Ford Tauruses and Chevy Cruises or whatever forever. I wanna be selling cool, fun cars. And then I moved back to New Hampshire where my family's from and cool, fun supercars don't sell up here. So we started buying trucks and SUVs, things that made money that people needed. And we made a lot of money. I paid a lot of bills and all the things, like paid, paid some serious things off. It was awesome. Made tons of money through my car dealership. I love it. I have no regrets about it. It's the best thing I ever did. I can actually teach you how to do that on startyourdealership.com if you wanna learn. There's a link in the description. So I started a car dealership, made a ton of money, did really, really well. Wanted to vlog about it, teach people how to do it. So I decided to start making YouTube videos and they caught on and people enjoyed what I was doing and saying, hey, what's that car in the background? Show me how to restore that. How much money do you make off selling that Audi? Hey, how much was that Porsche at the auction? How does a dealer auction work? So I started making videos about that. And then I enjoyed making the videos more than I enjoyed selling Chevy Silverados. So I really committed to YouTube and spent more time on YouTube than I did the dealership. And then it started to take over, which I'm really happy with. I love that you guys watch my videos. I love making videos. I am legit living my dream because I made the commitment to do so. However, becoming a YouTuber has destroyed my dealership. In today's video, I'm gonna explain that to you. What happened, why all the clunkers that I've bought for YouTube have consumed my dealership and now taken away from spots that actually make me money. And now I probably have $100,000 tied up into cars that I probably will never sell all because I wanted to be a YouTuber. So I'm gonna explain, explain what I have, show you what I have, go through all my clunkers and my hoopties right now. I'm gonna start right at my house. I'll go in my garage, we'll go to my house, I'll show you what I have there, then we're gonna go to my overflow lot and then we're gonna come right back here. So let's just 
Let's just go. This right here is my 9,000 mile 1994 Dodge Viper. I used it twice this entire year. It's tying up a ton of money, but I love this car and it really, really makes me smile. This is the stuff that I want to have an entire collection of. It's a piece of art. It's, to be honest with you, a masterpiece. I love looking at it and I just come down to my garage sometimes just to smile. And before the Skyline was sitting in my garage, I had a 2003 Ferrari 360 sitting right here that was beautiful and red and convertible that I used fairly regularly for a Ferrari. And it was great, but it tied up $88,000. Now this collection of bicycles that never get used, each one of those bikes is probably a thousand dollars. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The seven thousand dollars hanging on my wall right there. Like these things are really starting to add up. Now this Nissan Skyline, which I never use because it's not even my most fun car. This is a 1995 Nissan Skyline GTST. It is right hand drive and it is fun and it is cool. And I love driving backwards through the drive throughs because it just turns a lot of heads. Midnight Purple 2, it's a color changing. It's really amazing. But it's also tying up $30,000, which makes me no money. So like I could have this invested in anything else. I could have bought Bitcoin and gone just absolutely through the roof, Tesla, Facebook, whatever. This $30,000 could have invested appropriately and made me a ton of money instead of just being a savings account that's accruing zero interest and possibly losing value. So that's what's tough about having high priced cars. My Ferrari, I owned that for nine months and took a loss on it. If I had taken that $86,000 or $88,000 and invested into anything else or five more cars, I would have had a better return on my money. This Viper has been sitting here for years and years. I love that car and don't have any intentions of selling it. But, and I'm hoping that car will one day appreciate, but it really hasn't gone up in value much more than what I paid for it seven years ago. Now my most favorite car, which is actually my daily driver, is my 2023 Audi e-tron GT. This car is so fun to drive, has four doors, fits five passengers so I could fit my entire family in the car. It is incredibly fuel efficient because it takes no fuel. I love this car. Now, $103,000 window sticker, now currently worth sixty-five dollars to $70,000, meaning in just like a year and a half, it has depreciated $35,000. So tying up this much money in a vehicle, it just doesn't make any sense. Now let's go to this car where I can see a chipmunk right under my front bumper, probably chewing my wires. This is my 1990 Eagle Talon TSI that hasn't moved here in well over a year. It's just been under storage covers through the entire winter. This car was completely restored and you can see just from sitting like paint react and has been, it's just, I love this car and the idea of it was great. I probably have, look at, look at acorns. So there are critters in here and this car kind of stinks just from sitting. And I, to be honest with you, this is an 80,000 mile car that I love tremendously. I've always wanted one in high school. I own one. Oh no. Look at what the freaking mice did. They're probably chewing my wires. So this car that I'm way over invested in, I just couldn't get it running just right. It, it's drivable, but it's just not right there. So it's not my primary fun toy car and it's tying up $10,000. And if I get it right, running right, it's worth more than that. But even still, like I could have, look at, apparently it's leaking a little bit. And now the, this is just for me. Oh man, when I put it, when I put it here, it was in much better shape and now I need to go through it again and it just makes me really, really sad. So having a toy collection, unless you have inside storage that's heated without critters getting in there, it's really a bad idea. Let's move on. Oh, this car bums me out so much because it was just, I had such high hopes for it when I bought it and I got like 90% of the way there. And now this is what it looks like. Well, welcome to my overflow lot. Why do I have an overflow lot? Because I keep collecting things. I'd like to say that I'm not a hoarder, but every once in a while, I second guess myself. So this is my 1994 Mercury Cougar XR7. That's a 4.6 liter V8 rear wheel drive with 60,000 miles that came from California. This car is completely rust free. There is no rust. Like I think part of the reason I buy these things is because I admire them. I can appreciate them. These rocker panels are original. The interior is original. It's dirty, it's gross. But I just had these dreams of envisioning like, oh, I could bring this thing back to life. It'll be a gem in New Hampshire. Someone will appreciate this. Who is going to appreciate a 1994 Mercury Cougar? Like, I don't really think anybody, but I paid 600 bucks for the car. Cost me 1700 to ship it here from California. So I'm into this Cougar for $2,100. Why did I do it? Not because I knew I was gonna resell it, because I wanted to make a YouTube video out of it. This is a fun car, like it could be a project. I look at it and I go, hey, this could be a fun project. Hey, this could be a good video. Hey, we should go buy this car. That was eight months ago. Let's move on. All right, 
another Eagle Talon. I paid $1,800 for this car. This is not a TSI. This is a naturally aspirated four cylinder with the five speed. I did that with my plow truck. I backed into it myself. The car's original and clean and not rotted and actually runs great, far better than my TSI Talon. I don't need it. I don't need to drive it. I could clean it and fix it and sell it. But the one day I do want to work on that car, I want to make sure I have the donor car. So this is essentially my donor car that's been sitting here for three years. I made a video on it. The video kind of paid for it. So now I just have a car sitting here for a long, long, long period of time. And now on to the one that I actually really, really like that is boat wrapped. This is my 2002 Cadillac Escalade convertible. Everyone corrects me when I say convertible because it's not a convertible. It doesn't convert into a hard top. It is just a roofless. What do you call that? Topless. Escalade, love that truck. It is one of the most reliable cars I own, one of the most fun cars I own, and I own it for very, very little. So one of the hoopties that I love driving is my Escalade convertible. I love it so much that I winterize it in boat wrap. Let's continue moving on. Now, I have all of these for no reason at all because I appreciate them. So I learned a lot from that project. I made a lot of mistakes from that project. I learned what I would do differently on that project. So I came across another Escalade and thought to myself, Craig, let's do it all over. This one is way cleaner on the inside, has less miles. Let's start it over and do it the right way. Now, what's the right way? Well, if we're gonna do this, I want it to have a tailgate. I want it to have storage right here because I can't, I chopped that whole car up and it's just weird and botchy. So I bought an avalanche. Now, in case I needed a new interior, the interior on this one is pretty mint. Like I could swap anything I want out of this truck put it into an Escalade if I needed it. Now these, this is what I really love. The storage on the sides, I can imagine this fitting right here. Now this tailgate opens up, so it doesn't work. I actually had to stationary, like weld that one stationary, the tailgate doesn't open. Neither would this one, if I cut this, there's nothing that would keep this connected because there's only a latch right here and it's connected by the top. If I cut the roof off, there's nothing holding this in place. Unless I took the tailgate off this avalanche use the hinges and the pins and put everything on that. So when I came across an $800 avalanche, I said, I am gonna do that. I'm gonna do that. That's what I'm gonna do. So I kept it. That was over a year ago. This was over a year ago. That one, same thing. It ran well, it was 800 bucks. And I'm like, I'll buy it. If I need any parts, if I need the 5.3 engine out of that, if I need the transmission, it's all worth more than I paid for the car. But now I have two avalanches and two Escalades that I don't even drive. Let's keep going. Craig, why do you have a school bus? Well, I'll tell you why I have a school bus. No yelling on the bus. Everybody on, good, great, grand, wonderful. I said that backwards, but what movie is that from? This bus, it is legit a bus. And I can fit 12 passengers and have fun in this. Like if I go to a concert and I pick my friends up in this, I would have so much fun in it. But I legit bought a bus just so I could go to a concert every now and then, which I haven't even used yet. So I bought this six months ago and literally drove it from the auction to here. Made a video about it and then never did anything with it again. Or I can convert it into an RV. I don't have the time for that. I don't have the time to convert to an RV. I'd have to pay somebody to do it. It's just not something I want to, I'm not sure that I want to do that. So now I just have a school bus that I don't use. I showed you the school bus that I bought because I thought it would be fun to drive people around in. Let's go back to my other shop where I'm gonna show you more hoopties. A few minutes later. Welcome back to my shop, Flying Wheels, where I'm gonna show you some more of my hoopties because they are really, really taking over what was once a car dealership. And like I said, becoming a YouTuber probably wasn't the best thing for me because now I'm buying things like this and things like that, and things like that, and things like that. Why am I doing it? Why am I doing it? Well, I'm gonna show you one of my favorite cars, okay? Out of everything I own here, one of my most favorite cars is this right here. This is a 2005 Cadillac DeVille Professional. This is a processionary limo. What is a processionary limo? Well, sadly, when somebody dies, they go to the funeral home. The funeral home has their funeral car. They go in a procession, like when all the cars follow the funeral car or the whatever the, the, what do they call that? What is, a, what is a limo that holds a casket called? A hearse, a hearse. Well, when you follow the hearse, the family follows the hearse in a processionary limo, which is this right here. It fits nine people, not like a stretch limo with a loop. It fits people like a regular 
car. This has 13,000 miles and fits one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I've used this car twice. I bought it a year ago. I paid $7,000 for it. Why? 13,000 miles. It's like a brand new Cadillac. It is unbelievably nice. Look at, look at that leather. It rides like a Cadillac. It rides like a brand new Cadillac, as a matter of fact. It is so comfortable. Now, I owned one of these previously. I owned an older one, a 94. It was old, and I think that was probably the novelty of it. It was kind of cool. It smelled old, and it looked old, and it had a, like a four, four liter GM engine, which was a great engine. I paid three grand for it. I used it, I loved it. I sold it, I sold it for $4,500. Why? Because that's a car that anybody's like, oh, I could spend $4,500 on a toy. I could drive that for a little while and spend $4,500 on it. So I bought it, I used it, I sold it, I made a profit. And then with that profit, I missed it. And I came across this one. I'm like, hey, maybe it's time for an upgrade. Maybe it's time to get one that's nicer, that's better. Why, Crank? Why? Why spend $7,240 on a limo? I mean, I could start, legit start my own limo company between this and the bus, and I have like some other things too that I could use. Uh, maybe I'm onto something here. I would have made some of my money back on this car. I own this thing. Now you can see I have it for sale backwards for $99.95. I can't tell you how many $5,000 offers I've got. Like I would light this car on fire in front of everybody on Facebook Marketplace before I sell it for $5,000. It has 13,000 miles. And what car, every car has gotta be worth $10,000 with 13,000 miles. So it, this car actually turned out to be pretty frustrating just because of how many messages I get with like low ball ridiculous offers. My Facebook rating is really low because I tell so many people to please kindly F off uh, or respond, I will light this car on fire before I sell it to you for that price. So, you know, they leave me a bad rating and then I have a bad Facebook rating because I was a jerk to someone that was a jerk. Very frustrating. Let's move on. Here is another YouTube car. This is a 2006 Land Rover Range Rover Sport HSE. Supercharged, V8, four wheel drive, with a winch, with Brembo brakes, with adjustable air ride suspension, with tow package. I bought this thing a year ago. Why? Look at tow package right there. Supercharged Sport. I bought this thing a year ago for $2,000. I couldn't believe a running, driving kind of Range Rover Sport for $2,000. Why do you want it, Craig? I can make the best YouTube video out of this car. I'm not gonna sell it to anybody. I'm not gonna sell a beat up Range Rover to somebody. It's not something I wanna like have on my front line. But what I thought of was like, hey, the YouTube video would actually pay for this car. Whistling Diesel bought a Mercedes G63 AMG beat the heck out of it. He spent like $150,000 on that or more. This, I spent two grand and I bet it's near capable as that Mercedes. So, you know, I thought it'd be fun to do like a video with my son, Logan, he's 14 almost. We can go do a whistling diesel type video for two grand, like budget whistling diesel. I still think that's a great idea. Well, timing chain issues, doesn't run right. It's been sitting here forever. So now I have one, two sitting here. That's a parts car, forget that one. Impala SS, 5.3 liter V8, front wheel drive, I paid 500 bucks for it. This is not something I would sell to somebody because you can see it's rotted, it's rotting, it has 190,000 miles, bumper needs to be repainted. Like, I guess I could fix it and sell it, but I have like bigger fish to fry. Every one of those cars, if you notice that video Kia that was a video, I still have that thing because everybody hates the color. But I have like cars that actually will make me money. So this one keeps push, getting pushed off because the Rogue shows up or the Jetta shows up. I'm like, well, those, I can fix that and sell it way quicker than I could fix this and sell this. So this has been sitting here for quite some time, tying up like, I don't know, I bet I paid a thousand dollars for it. Maybe I paid $1,200 for it because it's a 5.3 SS. That's a V8 front wheel. Like that's kind of a cool car in its glory. Let's move on. I paid $500 for this Grand Marquis. It is absolutely spotless on the inside. It's probably locked. It is mint and it only had 80,000 miles, but the paint's chipping all over. Craig, why'd you buy it? I wanted to prove to people that you can still buy cars for $500 at auction. You can, that's the proof. Runs, drives great, needs paint, not a priority. So it's gonna sit right next to that Impala while we work on the nicer cars. Let's progress into things that I said I would never ever buy again, which I did. I know don't buy Audis. I know. Don't buy Porsches. I bought an Audi and I bought a Porsche. Why? Because I spent two grand on a Porsche Cayenne Turbo. Maybe I spent $2,500. I was on an auction app, oh, bid. On an auction app, oh, bid, oh, bid. Oh, that's cheap, oh, bid. I think I started at like $1,000 for a twin turbo V8 all wheel drive SUV. Again, same truck, like on the same level as that GL63 AMG whistling diesel truck that I was just talking about for $2,500. 
it's near unsellable and that's a whole video that has either come out or is coming out so now i own like i own this thing for like near five grand and it's still not really a great car like it shouldn't be on what a car dealer calls their front line. It's not a front line ready car. It's, it's a project for somebody. I'm done with it. I'm not gonna put more time into it. I can't, someone else is going to have to. I bought it to make a video. If I didn't make videos, I wouldn't have bought it. Let's go on to this Audi. I love Audis. I hate Audis. I love and hate Audis. This A7, one of my favorite cars. Why? That e-tron GT has near no trunk space. Did I say that correctly? Near no trunk space? If I open this, you'll see like just this section opens up. So if I put anything right here, the trunk does not shut. The A7, this whole hatch opens. There is so much space in an A7. This is a supercharged three liter, pretty reliable engine. Unless people try to modify it, this car at one time in its heyday had near 500 horsepower. It has different pulleys. It has like catless exhaust as a tune. Was probably crazy fast for somebody once, but because they messed with it, has now internal engine problems, leaks coolant. If I haven't done this video yet, it's coming out soon. It was a lot of work. I knew don't buy it. I bought it in the repossession lane from the bank. It's clean. It looks good. Doesn't run so good. So I bought it for a video to say, I don't buy Audis, but I bought an Audi. And now I have an Audi that I can't sell that I own for probably too much money. So you can see the front end of this. Like, how do you say no to this car for $4,500? I was thinking it'd just be an awesome toy for that price. A 500 horsepower car for $4,500. That is amazing. And even though I know I'm not supposed to buy them, I couldn't resist and I probably would buy another one for that same price. I have more, let's continue. Oh man, my Buick Riviera. My spaceship of a car. This is a 1995 Buick Riviera, 95,000 miles. It's unbelievable. The car is supercharged, three point liter V8. When this car came out, it was like futuristic looking. Pretty, pretty cool. Coupe, that engine is near indestructible. I live in New Hampshire. It has a completely rotted subframe. Like it's perfect on the outside, perfect on the inside. It has a rotted subframe. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. Like the engine could fall out of it at any day. So I have to sell it to somebody telling them that and let them do the rotted subframe because I don't have the time for that. It was gonna be a video, it was gonna be cool. I probably released the video already, but part two, there isn't gonna be a part two because I don't have the time to do a subframe. If I was only a YouTuber, like let's say Sam Crack or any of those guys, they'll buy the car, they'll fix it, and they'll really like go through it and do the repairs because they're not car dealers. They don't have to do 20 cars. I buy five cars at an auction. I pick and choose like the easiest ones to fix and clean and sell. I don't just focus all my time on one giant project. So if I was only a YouTuber, this could be like a five or six part series and really be interesting, but I just don't have the time for it. So I can't do it, which is a real bummer. I have to either commit to one or the other. I can't be like 50% car dealer, 50% YouTuber. So now I have another, I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. I have another project. Okay, more projects. Love it. Love this car. 1994 Toyota Celica, four cylinder, five speed, Southern car, no rust. Now I told you about the rust on the Riviera. So to find things with no rust is really, really exciting for me. And that's why I appreciate them so much. However, you can see it needs a paint job. Worse, it needs body work. I paid a thousand dollars for this car. A running, driving, manual transmission Toyota. It's worth a thousand dollars. Bought it. I've had it nine months because I'm gonna make a video about it. But when am I gonna paint it? Like I should just have sent it off to somebody, paid them, the what, $1,000, $1,200, and then I'm into it for 12, 20, 2,500 maybe when I'm done. And then what's it worth? So it's been sitting here getting neglected because I have other videos to shoot. I have other cars to fix. Next car, which was really my highest hope and my biggest disappointment. 1998 Ford Thunderbird with, with a 4.6 liter overhead cam V8. It's a Ford Mustang engine. When I was in high school, a friend of mine, Dave, Dave, if you're watching this, had one of these, actually it was his dad's. This color, well, not this color, this color, in red with chrome wheels, V8. It was just like, for I never really thought Thunderbirds were cool, but his was. This car came from North South Carolina, so there is no rust, but it needs love. Again, I paid $400 for it, so I'm like, oh, cool project, we'll make a great video. Over a year now, this car has had a birthday here which really is just a bummer. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. I have a completely solid low mileage T-Bird from South Carolina that needs a hood, a fender, wheels, like a good amount of love. So I'm not gonna do anything with it. And now they're just adding up until I one day junk them, which I don't wanna do, which is why it's still here. I need to preface something. Winter's just ending, okay? So in New Hampshire, 
you get a lot of snow and the snow melts and then it turns to mud and like you start to realize how much damage happened over the winter so when you see like trash down here and bricks and like stuff on the ground and the dirt on my parking lot it's really not what my dealership is supposed to look like we're coming out of winter and i was away for a week so now is like we, we usually do like a spring cleaning go through the entire lot this is my last one which i'm actually not so disappointed about if you watch my videos you know this car 2003 mercedes sl 500 39,000 miles what's a real bummer that 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 this this all done by me in florida if you've seen my auction videos you know this car we bought for video this car i thought i was going to sell in florida we didn't it's a hoopty it's a 39,000 mile hoopty but it's a sellable car this is how it showed up off the trailer because winter again but we did a power steering pump on it so now the suspension holds oddly because the suspension is connected to the power steering pump this it's a hydraulic suspension we fixed the top already now we just have to detail it and then we can sell it like spring is almost here i'm not even in a coat you might be able to see my nipples but i'm not not even in a coat okay we'll be able to sell this and we'll be able to make money on it so out of all the hoopties this is my favorite the limo is my favorite the rest are actual hoopties and you can see one two three four five six seven eight nine ten hoopties in a parking lot that only fits 30 cars so 30 percent 33 percent of my inventory are for video and stuff i'm not even like fixing cleaning or selling or making any money on so that's the problem with being a youtuber i guess youtuber i say that loosely i buy things that i like i buy things that make videos instead of buying things that actually make me money which is when we started doing this as a dealership, I was only buying what made money. I wasn't buying long-term projects. I was buying things to buy, fix, clean, and sell quickly. So when you watch these videos and I say, here's how to run your dealership. I have a course that teaches you how to start your own dealership. I tell you how to do things, but I'm also telling you how not to do things. Don't buy these long-term projects. There's no money in it. You can't pay somebody to go paint an entire Celica. You, like the clear coat on that's gonna cost me a thousand bucks to have repaired. That Audi A7, the repair bill was like three grand. The Porsche repair bill was like another three grand. So don't buy the things I buy for video unless I get, I mean, I tell you which ones are winners and which ones are losers. So you can listen to some of it and then listen to the other part when I say, don't buy these things because this was a loser. I only made it for video. I have a lot of those right now. And I'm turning into, just like I said, Tyler Hoopy. I have a lot of hoopties because I'm a YouTuber. So I need to make some adjustments, smarten up. I'm learning how things work and I just don't need junk all over the place in two different areas, actually three different areas, my house, my overflow, and my shop. Things are starting to look messy. Things are starting to look bad. I'm a bit disappointed in myself. If this video was educational, was it? Was it at all educational? Informative? Was it informative? Entertaining? Might have been entertaining. Just thumbs ups don't cost you anything, but they do help these videos. You can help support my habit of buying nonsense projects so I can make more videos for you just by hitting the like button and subscribing to see when our next Hoopty is. So thanks for watching. I'll see you all later. Subscribe and like. Appreciate it. I'll see you all later. Adios.